The world around us is constantly changing. Over the course of the next million years, our planet will experience a myriad of natural events, some of which will have a profound impact on life as we know it. From the continued shift of tectonic plates to the possibility of a supercontinent forming, we will explore the science behind these predictions and what they could mean for our future. So join us as we take a journey through time and space to explore the next million years of Earth's history. These are the 20 things that will happen to Earth in the next million years. Number 20. Animals I'll begin with something basic being animals. Some of you may wonder what animals on Earth will look like in a million years, and I'll admit that I can't make a full prediction on that because there are a lot of factors that go into life and it's changing over the years. You may recall that when it comes to evolution, it's not only about the animals, but the conditions that they're in. They have to evolve to overcome things like the atmosphere, the temperature, the ecosystems they find themselves in, and the predators that are hunting them and so on. If we're basing things on the way that Earth is currently heading with the climate, pollution, and human population, animals are definitely going to have to change to survive. The warmer the planet becomes, the more they'll have to adapt, and I could see a major outcropping of new animals heading to oceans because there's still plenty of real estate out there. But then again, because the oceans are full of trash and slowly becoming contaminated, they may have to adapt to that as well. Another situation that can't be ignored is that animals will have to adapt to not having a lot of space to live in. Don't forget that humans are expanding at a rate that'll eventually end up killing all the forests in the world and leave a very barren and unfruitful place for the animals to live. That'll be a hard thing to overcome, but given enough time, it could actually happen. There's also the possibility that in a million years, humanity dies out entirely, and the world's going to become wild again, and that means they'll get to roam the land free of human influence, which could alter the animals even further. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Natural Selection I'll continue with animals for a bit because the idea of looking into the future a million years brings up a core concept of animal life, that being natural selection. Long story short, natural selection is the ability of certain animals to change to their environment and then pass on the genes that they've made or altered in order to keep their line going. A great example of this are the birds of the Galapagos, which are a multiple kind of one species of those islands because they all had to adapt to eat certain things and thus thrive in their surroundings. They all began basically as the same bird, but then they evolved to become something better. Those who aren't able to adapt to the situations they're in by contrast will die out and their genes will become eliminated from the gene pool. You might call this a survival of the fittest scenario as gruesome as it may sound. So why does this matter in a million years? Well, because throughout those years, the animals of our world are going to have to adapt or die. It'll be telling to see what animals survive in a million years, given all the changes that are going to take place, both natural and artificial. As noted, it's possible that humanity may not be around in a million years. Whether it be through war or disease, humanity could die, and that will drastically affect the planet. It's up to the animals to figure out the means by which they survive, or they'll follow the path to extinction. Many say that mammals will be the ones to last the longest, but that's not a guarantee. Charles Darwin knew the power of the process, and if he could have seen a million years into the future, oh, the wonders that he would have beheld. Number 18. Lifespan while it's fair to think that humanity might die off eventually, the simple fact is that in the short term, as we make that march toward a million years to the future, the reverse could be true. While there was a point in time a couple hundreds years ago when the average lifespan of a person was either really long or really short. It was a pendulum because we had not gotten to the part of history where modern medicine could cure most afflictions. Back then, even a bad cut could lead you to death, or getting sick might be fatal. But now our life expectancy is in the high 70s or 80s due to the number of ways that we know how to take care of ourselves. Between medicine, exercise, and the ability to eat right to encourage health, we know how to expand our lifespans. 
Granted, we can't prevent everything with medicine, and a random accident could kill us, but if we're taking the best option, then our lifespans are going to be long. The more that time passes, and the more that our technology grows, the more likely that our health will improve and we'll gain even longer lifespans. There are some series which have depicted futures where medical knowledge is through the roof, and you can be cured of almost every disease from birth. And then there are those people working on gene editing and therapy that can make it so that our very DNA will resist things like sickness, cancers, and any afflictions. That's also going to greatly help our lifespans if we're able to make it fully functional. If humanity does survive for a million years, then it's possible we'll be as close to immortality as we can by then, potentially at least. Number 17. Growing in Size Okay, well this one's not yet been confirmed, but it's another one that's possible given how far into the future we might go. Animals have the ability to adapt themselves to situations as you've seen, but even now, with only some time passed between any two points in the recent past, animals are already showing changes to the environment. Mainly, they're growing their appendages. But why would they do that? Well, simply put, their appendages are one of the ways that they go about regulating their body temperature. And if you think about it in terms of how you're dressed, when it's a hot day, you're all right with showing more skin because it lets the heat out and potentially allows you to cool down. When you're cold, you pile on the layers and hide your skin because you want to keep the heat in so that you can stay comfortable. Animals know the advantages of having ways to get rid of excess body heat, so they grow parts of their bodies as a result. Some birds, for example, grow their beaks, and over the course of a certain amount of years, parrots were shown to have grown their beaks by 10% above what it was normally. Other animals grew their hands or feet so that they could better regulate their temperature. But naturally, there's the extreme option to this. If they're able to slowly grow their body parts, what's stopping them from growing their entire bodies? If they were able to grow their size to better amounts, that could lead to animals being bigger and larger and longer the more that time goes on, so long as they feel it's necessary for their survival. And that's the thing with humans that they need to worry about, even bigger animals on the planet. Number 16. The Sun. Humanity is never afraid to ask the question of how are we all going to die. One of the ways that we very likely could die is by the sun. After all, when it comes to stars, they have a life cycle, and that life cycle varies depending on the kind of star that a planet or system has. In our case, we have a yellow dwarf star, and it's one that's been around for billions of years providing light and heat to our world. The catch is that the stars out in the night have a timer that will trigger when they reach a certain stage in life. And for our yellow dwarf star, known as Sol, when it gets to a certain age, it'll trigger an explosion that will turn into a supernova. That supernova will grow so large that it engulfs the planet Mercury, Venus, Earth, and possibly Mars, and the new supernova will drastically change the complexion of our entire solar system and nothing will be as it was before. But there is a catch. While that is very likely to happen, we as humans are very unlikely to ever see it happen. I say that because scientists predict that such an event will only occur about 5 billion years down the road. And if you recall, we're only looking about 1 million years down the line to start with. Now that's not to say that the sun won't play a big role in the times to come for our planet. If we're smart, we're going to better use the sun to fuel our planet and help us get to a more energy-sustained future. We also could make a Dyson sphere around it and have so much energy that it could kickstart the next wave of human evolution, but only time will tell. Number 15. Outside Interference now, if I'm being honest, one of the ways that most people predict that life will end on Earth is by something from the outside raining on our parade, and as a result, we all become wiped out. Well, we've avoided such catastrophic events in the past. That doesn't mean it won't happen eventually. The fact of the matter is, though, that the universe is very big and a dangerous place. There are all sorts of things that could cause us to be wiped out, and that means that we're almost always in danger. Whether it be an asteroid barreling towards us and hitting us when we least expect, or perhaps even a rogue star crashing into our system like a ball without a string, things could get ugly, and with our current technology level, we wouldn't be able to stop it. Number 14. Orbit 
The universe has a very logical design to it, and by that I mean everything seems to fit right in its place and allows it to work like clockwork. Granted, as I just talked about, the likelihood of outside interference is possible, but it would take a big event to throw everything out of whack. So, if we were to look one million years into the future, would our orbit around the sun be affected by anything? If we were to lose our orbit around the sun, we would very easily be thrown into chaos for numerous reasons. Again, we work like a well-oiled machine, and if you gum up the gears, bad things will happen. The good news is that unless something incredibly drastic takes place, the likeliness of our orbit being affected is low, which is good. That's one less thing that we have to worry about. But trust me, we have plenty of other things that we can worry about currently. Number 13. Geodynamics Long story short, geodynamics is the science that deals with dynamic processes or forces within the Earth, or to make it even shorter, it's the forces that help make the world work and grow from within. So the act of making the Earth's plates and moving them, or causing a volcano to emerge from the ground, or even starting an earthquake, you know, stuff like that. But why does something like that matter in the next million years? Simply put, that's a lot of time for things to go horribly wrong on our planet. A great example lies in Yellowstone National Park. Within that popular destination spot is a super volcano, one that many think could erupt at any time, and that time could happen in the next million years, and should it blow, the Earth will drastically be affected. Now, I'm talking like horror movie levels of affection, and that's just one event. The point of geodynamics is that it's multiple forces working within the Earth, so now just imagine a future where all of them fall into disarray. The phrase, we're screwed, wouldn't even cover it. Number 12. How Will Humanity Change? Now, I already talked about the lifespan of humans changing over the years, but allow me to go deeper. What will humanity look like in the future? Well, that depends on a lot of factors, and some of them are out of our control. For example, there are some futures where people believe that we'll become more evolved beings, but whether that happens in the next million years is anyone's guess. There are also those who believe we'll become more machine than man, and that's possible if technology does evolve, but also something that can't be proven. It's also possible possible that humanity will be the cause of the world going into a state of disarray? We're almost always a hair's breadth away from that taking place, so that's something to keep in mind as well. A million years is quite a long time, and it means that humanity's choices are near infinite in the way that they can cause the outcome, so let's just do our best to be good people. Number 11. Eschatology now, if you're not familiar with that word, it's part of theology that's concerned with death, judgment, and the final destiny of the soul of humankind. Now, despite what scientists may like to think, there's no definitive way to prove that there's not a god or pantheon of gods that made everything. Everything from the Big Bang to parts of evolution can be described as God-blessed if it's done to the right person. So by that logic, that means that in a million years it could be that Rapture or Judgment Day or even Ragnarok comes for us all. No matter what side you believe, it could happen, and that means that the end of the world might just depend on when the gods decide to descend from their thrones and start the next stage of life. Number 10. Losing the Oceans Here's one that many people feel is going to happen in one form or another. There will come a time in our world where we might actually lose the oceans. Given what's going on with global warming, that might be a hard thing to picture. After all, the polar ice caps are melting, and that's causing the ocean levels to rise. However, there's a process that's going on right now where the oceans are slowly being sucked into the Earth's mantle. And should that keep going on, well, we'll lose the oceans slowly but surely. Now, that's not something that the Earth can handle for various reasons, not the least of which is that the ocean is full of lifeblood for many species out there, and for them to suddenly lose their homes would cause untold devastation. Not to mention the sudden increase in land would cause problems for us, as odd as it may sound. 
It also won't help that the atmosphere will eventually get into a state that'll help influence the evaporation of our oceans. It'll enhance the greenhouse effect and raise the temperature so high that the waters will boil and then evaporate. Except instead of the water cycle taking effect and raining the water back down, it'll hold the water and not release it. It's not a good look for the planet. And to be clear, the process would take a while, but perhaps the steps are already in place. Number 9. Climate Change now, this is a topic that is highly debated amongst people. The fact of the matter is, the Earth is slowly warming up, and as a result of that, the ice is melting, the waters are rising along with the temperatures, and we're slowly becoming a greenhouse planet. That means that a million years into the future, the planet could be in multiple different phases of life, depending on how it reacts to the changes in the climate. One is that we'll become a greenhouse planet like Venus, and life will basically cease to exist due to extreme heat. Or we could see another ice age occur as a reaction by the planet to cool everything down, and then most of life will be frozen. Neither sounds appealing, and honestly, neither sounds plausible, but what do I know? Number 8. The Red Giant now, scientists theorize that the sun will eventually go supernova and become a red giant one day, but you don't have to worry about that happening anytime soon. Even in a million years, they say it's not going to happen. You might say, well, couldn't we affect it? But the answer is no. It would take something well beyond what we're capable of to affect the sun so badly that it would trigger an early reaction. But then again, humanity does like to overachieve when it comes to making things worse. Number 7. Continental Drift now I'll talk about something that everybody knows is happening right now. Continental drift is the act of the tectonic plates that make up the Earth slowly moving apart from one another. We know that this is taking place because we've picture proof of areas that shouldn't exist but do because the plates are moving away from each other. The good news is that the rate of such drift is so small that it wouldn't affect us a lot going forward, but when you look forward in a million years, that's a whole lot of drifting. And there are other factors that could lead to the drift becoming worse. You never know, and that's the scary thing. Number 6. Obliquity Obliquity is a really super fancy schmancy word for talking about the Earth's tilt and the axis that it's on. When you picture the planet, you likely think of a ball floating around in space, and if you were to put a rod through the planet, you'd probably align it so that it's perfectly vertical. But that's not how things work at all. The planet is actually on a tilt, and it's that tilt that causes the seasons to take place as they do. As a result, that axis point is one of the most important things about our planet. So now, just imagine in the next million years or so, that that tilt of our planet changes. And I don't mean by a small amount, I mean by a rather large one. An amount that's honestly quite frightening, whether it be by meteor crash or humanity affecting the magnetic field of the planet in some way, if the axis tilts, everything's going to change. Our planet is more or less built on the point of which that axis tilts, so if you're going to change it, then everything that affects the planet will start affecting the planet differently. The seasons will change, the water levels based on the moon's pole will change, and animals and humans will have to adapt to the situation they find themselves in. There are some who state that if the axis of the planet was to change too much, it might become uninhabitable, mainly because of all the dynamic shifts that'll rock the planet, so you probably should hope that such an event's never going to take place and will live much longer that way. Number 5. Supercontinent some scientists say that once upon a time, the Earth wasn't made of seven continents, it was actually made of one supercontinent known as Pangaea, and eventually through various factors it became two supercontinents, and then on and on and it became seven. Those seven would change heavily over a millennia and eons as a result, and we were left with the seven that we live on right now. But as we've already talked about, the continents are already drifting apart from each other. What would happen if some of them crashed into the others? Well, a supercontinent would be born, and that could cause a whole new paradigm on the planet. Granted, the odds of that happening in the near future or even somewhat distant future is unlikely, but with the right circumstances, I mean, anything could be possible. So what would this supercontinent do? Well, it would change the face of the planet, of course, and also alter how both humanity and animal life would survive 
survive in a newly formed area. Imagine if Europe broke off from Asia and then crashed into Canada. That would be a big deal, and it would affect a lot of things. It's true that we would eventually adapt to the situation. That's not one that you'd want to try to prepare for. But then again, if it were to happen, we really wouldn't have a choice now, would we? Number 4. The Earth's Core now, if you were to talk about the most important things that keep our planet alive, the two things you could point out was the atmosphere and the Earth's core. As a result, anything that would happen to those two over the course of a million years would mean that things would suck pretty badly for all of us. One thing that many people fear is the liquid core of our planet suddenly going hard. This is a process that could happen in the future, and that would obviously affect everything on a large scale. The good news is that the time that it would take to do such a thing is beyond beyond a million years, it'd be more like a billion, which means that we're safe for now. Number 3. Lava Planet you know the game The Floor is Lava? Well, there's a reason why no one wants to play that game in real life. Because lava hurts, and you'll die if you touch it for too long. So, do we have to worry about our planet becoming a lava planet? Well, no, not really. Or at least not in the next million years. The core and the crust between would prevent something like that from happening. That is, unless you consider a massive set of eruptions that would theoretically cover the entire planet in lava. But the odds are pretty slim of that, right? Well, probably? Number 2. Speculative Evolution Now it's time to have some fun. We've already talked about animals and how they could evolve, but what if we are the ones in control of the evolution? What if we could have some fun and decide how things would evolve as we go further into the future? Where could that lead us? Well, let's start with the fun one. If humanity was able to influence evolution on a grand scale, we could be a few thousand years away from being in our own version of Jurassic Park. Just think about it. If we could harness the power of DNA and then use something like a replicator to breed life, which has been theorized to be possible, we could make our world full of creatures of the past. We could bring dinosaurs back to life or other creatures that have been wiped out by things like poaching or even ecosystem failures. We'd be able to change the dynamic of our world by making it so that any animal could live on it without issue. Now obviously that wouldn't be a smooth process given the godlike powers that we'd have, but that's why there are sequels, except when the sequels are horrible, like in Jurassic Park and Jurassic World and I just lost track of the plot. The point is that we could be the ones to change the evolution of our world by ensuring that we're the ones that's guiding it instead of the nature. That's speculative, but it's potentially exciting and enticing at the same time. Number 1. Planetary Habitability now, if we're looking forward to the best possible future for Earth, we might honestly need to look towards a future where we're not on the Earth anymore. Remember, we've looked a million years into the future, and some of the outlooks are kind of bleak. But there is one where we don't need to suffer along with the planet. Instead, we can just leave and go somewhere else. Planetary habitability is the science of trying to determine whether a planet is safe for a person to live on. Or in other words, it's finding a planet that could be the next Earth. The good news is that humanity has been looking for such a planet for ages. The bad news is that right now, even if we do find one, we can't exactly get there. But not for lack of trying, mind you. That's the benefit of looking forward a million years into the future. If humanity is able to bypass some of its issues and come up with technologies that could change everything, then all of a sudden, finding another planet to live on isn't such a hard thing to do. Especially if one of those technologies is traveling through space at light speed or beyond. And another thing that we could develop to help with planetary habitability is the option for terraforming, or transforming a planet to fit the needs of the user, which is humanity if you couldn't tell. Humanity has already thought about the possibility of terraforming Mars to better fit our desires, but what if we could do that for any planet that we lay eyes on? Imagine the possibilities of that. We could find a planet or a whole system where humanity could grow, and then we just change things to make our living there easier. That way, we wouldn't have to deal with a volatile system with potential exploding stars. We would just simply move to one that we'd be safe on for a near infinite amount of time and grow from there. And that's not a bad future, I don't think. That's all from the realm of the future and what Earth might be like in a million years when we're all dead and wouldn't care anyways. What do you think of the predictions of how life might be different on the planet? And do you agree that some of these things are very likely? Or 
do you have another idea of how things might change in a million years? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.